Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. This is going to be a somber episode, Anthony. Somber? Um, yeah. Maybe less somber and more angry, right? It's, it's one of those things that this, this border crisis um, has been underreported, and the things we do know about it are sad frankly, right. but uh, they're not getting any media attention. However, our buddy James Klug has been down at the border, keeping an eye on things. It's weird that it's you and it's not AOC. Yeah. Yeah. Where's your picture? Where's your <laughs> picture? Where's your picture? Up against the fence. Like uh, it almost looks like uh, Han Solo stuck in the carbonite. That's what she looked like then. You know, it's crazy. I was thinking about like, oh, James, what if you went and did like a, a shoot to, to mock her on that? And then I was thinking to myself, I'm like, no, because it's a serious situation and taking advantage of something for any situation just seems weird. Yeah. And she did that. Like she she did that, but she was serious and right. she used them to further an agenda. Yeah, and like, like look insane. You you get you get down in the stink of it. You get nasty. You're not afraid to get out there with the people, maybe even get punched sure. in the face occasionally. I know uh last time you were on the show, you were doing some Antifa stuff. Uh, were you at the insurrection by any chance? Were you were you there as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I actually didn't. I wasn't expecting it to, to turn out the way it did. Um, but whenever I go to rallies or anything like that, that's big. I know that there's going to be uh, like like officers, riot police there standing by. I bring gas masks with me in my backpack and everything like that. I bring all the gear just so I'm ready. But yeah, when when that happened, I was I was actually caught off guard. But yeah, I was there for sure. Why were you caught off guard? I wasn't expecting that. I, I, I know that, uh, I mean, obviously the more information that came out, it seemed like it was pre-planned, but uh, I didn't really hear about that. Um, I, had, I had actually heard a rumor that something was going on, mm -hmm. maybe like a day before, but I never took anything seriously. Yeah, we, and, we had Alex Jones on our Patreon. We have a Patreon now because, well, let's face it, YouTube is getting stricter and stricter against everybody sure. um, who has remotely conservative views. So we put our more, I don't know, dangerous episodes on there, if you want to say, on, on Drinking Bros uh, Patreon. One of them was Alex Jones, who had just come back from the Capitol building, and he said the same thing. He said, look, I, I was not expecting any of that to happen mm -hmm. whatsoever. Um, what did you hear going into that, uh, just out of curiosity, um, that was a rumor that you were like, oh, some people might do some things here. What, what was the rumor going around? Because he did not hear that. You know, it's, it's been a while now, and I only heard it vaguely. It's not like I had someone being like, oh, this is what's happening, and a bunch of people saying that. I, I think I heard something vaguely like there was going to be, um, oh, I forgot what it was, like a... Like a occupy mm. type of thing uh, but but like i wasn't you know like like we were thinking okay so occupy like you, you're, you're not necessarily thinking something intense maybe like a sit-in or whatever i don't know um and that's i think that's all i heard at the time i don't uh, i don't recall i mean it's been a little while but i heard like a, a rumor about that and then when that day came actually obviously i'm in elijah schaefer studio right here mm, please yeah. but uh elijah uh, elijah <laughs> elijah had <laughs> Very nice. elijah had um, covered that they were breaching basically like the initial barriers. And this happened about 20 minutes before Trump finished his speech. And um, keep in mind, you know, the speech was probably about a 10 minute, 15 minute mm. walk okay. uh, from the Capitol. Um, so I, I had spent a lot of time in DC around that point and I had saw the, the initial breach and I was like panicking. I was like, what, like, what is going on? So I ran over there basically and I know everyone was caught off guard. We had um, we had Jorge Ventura that was out there. We had a bunch of people that were out there and everyone was caught off guard. Nobody was ready for it. And, you know, of course, there were some people that were out there filming already. But most of us didn't go out because you know, I've heard Trump speak. I, I didn't really you, you know, I didn't really need to be covering that stuff like that. I wanted to kind of cover a little bit of the, the, the stuff that was happening throughout the day, throughout the evening, whatnot. Um, and yeah, that ended up it ended up catching a lot of people off guard. Yeah, because we, we haven't chatted since. And uh, I know I know you were there, obviously. And this kind of leads into uh, the, the border crisis stuff that we're we're going to talk about today, because that received endless coverage and is still yeah. to this day. The interaction, Trump people, all this other shit. Right. 
Whereas this, the border crisis has received zero, zero coverage whatsoever. Um, I'm just curious as to what the, the difference was from, from then to now and what you've noticed as far as reporting has gone because Dan and I did a, a fake news show earlier about mm -hmm. uh, the AP and how there's certain words you're not allowed to use when writing press articles now yeah. and everything else. Yeah. It's and just it just seems like it all crisis, right? Or what was that? Yeah, what, they're what not they, allowed to use the word the crisis. crisis. They're not allowed to, uh, and they, they said because it doesn't fit the typical definition of a crisis. What the fuck does that mean? Like, who, what are they going to Miriam Webster? Like, well, technically, who the fuck, I mean, who the fuck is high? It's a goddamn crisis, man. The other words are any kind of militaristic uh, language, like surge or anything like that. Occupation. Where were, where were all these activist news outlets during, or, or, or publisher, uh, publications when Democrats were saying that the United States had concentration camps? Yeah. When we yeah. when, when we had when we had our detention facilities, yeah. concentration camps, quite literally belittling the evils and the very real uh, terror that were concentration camps mm -hmm. and concentration camps that technically still exist to this day. Right. China, Ch uh, China with their Rangers, uh, yeah. with their um, uh, religious minorities mm -hmm. and, and all that. Um, you know, where where was this this type of oh, technically it's not that now we actually do have a crisis. It's the numbers have skyrocketed and the numbers have skyrocketed because we've chosen to loosen up and quite literally send the message of bring your unaccompanied children, yeah. bring bring your families, bring them all, because guess what? Not only are you not going to be deported, you're going to be given a plane ticket. You're going to be given some cash. You can go wherever you want. We probably won't even give you a court date right now uh, because we're so overwhelmed. There's a big difference between that and cracking down on immigration, therefore spiking caravans, stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. And, and again, I hate to go back to the insurrection, but to me, that was the yeah. date that it all changed. So after that, the media and everyone else on the left had had their their grand that was the, the the coup de gras right there so no matter what happened after that it was rights bad we had the insurrection this is what happens when you have republicans blah 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 blah, blah. it felt like the media changed after that it felt like the the tone of social media had changed after that because Trump, you know, got banned from everything after that and everything else. And then it seemed like the stories that were being covered were almost, I mean, I hate to say in like a, like a China, you know, communist way, but, but it is, it's, it seems like the news articles that are going out into the world are kind of like, uh, can you print that? Yep. Go ahead. Like it, it feels like somebody else is looking over it ever since that happened. And, uh, and I, I don't understand why, um, because this the, this crisis that's going down at the at the border that that you've been covering here is so massive, and it's been going on for multiple administrations. So it wasn't just Trump; it wasn't you know uh, Biden. Now it was it was also the Obama administration, which Biden was a part of. Um, clearly, we haven't solved this in in numerous presidencies at this point. Why isn't this just a non-political issue let's try to help these people and try to figure out what's going on at the border well it used to not be a political issue you know it used to not be a, uh, the, the the left used to believe in sh strong borders they used to believe in america first back in you know but we're talking years back if you look at the democratic platform of let's say like year 2000 it's unrecognizable you know, the, this party has shifted. They have shifted, unfortunately, and it's and it's sad because yes, there are still a lot of kind of classical liberals. There are still a lot of maybe center left liberals, stuff like that. But the truth is, their administration, their 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 elites, uh, whatever you want to call them, pretty much they're making the direction of just going far left. I mean, there's nothing not far left about the current policy that we have right now. And it's so important for like listeners to understand this because a lot of people just think, oh, well, you guys weren't pissed during 2019 when there was uh, a rise in in um, apprehensions. Of course, there was like caravans, everything like that. And now we care. No, it's not true. The right is always or a lot of folks on the right, at least uh, me, myself, I guess I can speak for have always been talking about the conditions that encouraging people to send their children mm. unaccompanied up to the border the conditions that this creates is inhumane i mean you guys like uh, i'm sure we'll jump into it in a, in a second but um the the children the families they get wristbands to track transit of or sorry payment transit like for their transit and everything like that hopefully i didn't butcher that so they get wristbands to track like where their payment is and there's these green ones it says like entras 
excuse my Spanish. Um, no, it's great, James. But, it's but, almost as good as mine. They, Biblioteca. They, thank you, thank you. But they 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 give them these green wristbands. This is the final payment. And what, what happens when they receive final payment? These what people are pay- looked at. What do you as, mean by payment? They're not yeah. looked at as humans. Br- br- break this down by the the bracelet color. What it means, and then what well, these payments are. Yeah. What do you tell? What do you mean payment? They're, they're, Who's paying them? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So so basically, uh, we're doing our best to kind of put together which bracelets are are what. But one thing that we know for a fact, there's there's uh, bracelets that mark uh, little girls just to make sure people aren't swapping. There's bracelets that mark um, like enter, uh, which is when like your final bracelet when you're when they're ready to take you across the Rio Grande River. And these bracelets, basically what these what these migrants do is they pay uh, cartels, they pay human smugglers to get them across. Mm-hmm. Right now, the going rate is around uh, around three thousand dollars, according to Mexican in- intelligence, yeah. to get an average migrant across. Now that number skyrockets for Asians. That number skyrockets for Africans, and I mean, they're literally marking them like cattle, and they treat them as such. And and when they get that green wristband, I'm not sure if you guys saw that video recently, but there's that human smuggler throwing the. 14 year olds over the wall i'm not sure yeah. if you guys saw well, that yeah we one, just saw there's it one last night where he uh, a guy's dropping a three and a five-year-old basically yeah. on top of each other over the sorry wall. sorry yeah. that, that's that's probably yeah. yeah that's probably the one that it is yeah. and and that's that's stuff that they do when mm. they get that final payment they get them to their final location and it doesn't matter if let's say a child's making too much noise on a raft crossing the rio grande river you know they have that green bracelet that's the final payment uh they're gonna get that that smuggler copy because they're making too much noise they'll throw them in the river the you child know, they're looked at the child absolutely yeah there's there's children that fall into the river uh there's children and they, and they don't turn back from them because keep in mind this is a product this is they don't look at them as a human being and it's it's a, it's a nightmare down there and the last thing you want to be doing is encouraging uh more and more of this because what that does right now these migrants are as profitable as drugs mm-hmm. these they, they are literally as profitable as drugs but why? For these cartels. why who's paying the cartel to move them and why so these pe- the, the 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 migrants are 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 paying uh, these smugglers because they know that they know how to get them into right. the U.S. for right. a better so, life. So I like guess that. I guess the next question is where are these uh, uh, abjectly poor families coming up with three thousand? The, the latest number is is thirty seven fifty. I think is the la- latest one I've heard. Mm-hmm. Where are the, where are they getting that money? That's like a year salary for somebody in Guatemala. That, uh, that's not and, that's and not hyperbole. I, yeah, I mean, I, I I have no clue. Um, when you ask them, we've asked them questions. Uh, I don't speak Spanish, of course, but uh, I was with a bunch of Spanish speakers. And we're trying to ask these people questions, and a lot of them, I, I'm not saying that things aren't bad in Guatemala, Honduras, stuff like that, but uh, a lot of them have a rehearsed kind of uh, talk track, if you will, oh, yeah, for sure, uh, to increase their chances of applying for, you know, th- making it through the asylum process mm. in the United States. So they just kind of give you the same answer and they don't really answer the ones that you want to know the answers to. Like we had one child that told us who gave him the interest. Uh, <laughs> sorry for my Spanish. No, it's fine. Uh, wrist, wristband. Uh, and he was like, yeah, a guy in Mexico just gave this to me. That's a human, mm. you know, that's a smuggler yeah, that, yeah, that sure, gave yeah. the child that. Uh, well, I can answer the money question where it's coming from. So I, I was referencing a doc on the last episode that I mm. saw about this. A lot of these families are, are physically saving up money. Uh, for the year or two years to get their children out of there for a better life to get away from the cartel and they're they're hiding it um, so they're stashing it in different places in case they get their shakedowns and things like for that sure. and then there's, you know giving the children the money to do it because there's, there's no way that 22 to 25,000 Guatemalans are a month are able to afford that not one chance I, I agree not a chance now people are also receiving money on the US side apparently uh, James if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken or at least uh, uh, there's this $2,500 payment in, in an envelope. It's a manila envelope with a white piece of paper stapled to the front that says that they don't speak English. Please help them. Mm-hmm. That's what it says in the front. Um, where that, there, there are some theories about where that money's coming from, but I would like to hear you explain more about that situation and then uh, uh, where you think the money might be coming Because from. what you're describing is almost like a spring break packet, right? Uh, of yeah. here's what you're getting. You're getting these bracelets. Uh, you're getting what you right. need to say, where to go, and, and all this other the, stuff. If that's the case, if there's some outside entity or organization outside of the people themselves trying to facilitate this, they're doing it for a reason, and it's not in our best interest, right? Uh, yes. So now it's not just a fucking economic issue or even a human rights issue. It's a national security issue. And who's funding course, it? You know what I mean? If you're trying to get one guy into the country or 10 guys to fucking jump on airplanes and fly a plane into a building, 
just throw them in with the crowd and see what happens, right? Yeah. As long if you throw a thousand dudes in that direction, look, there's twenty two thousand people, twenty two to twenty five thousand expected a month. You throw a hundred terrorists in with each one of those groups, maybe fucking most of them get caught. But if you get one each time, then you got a fucking squad. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, quick quick note about that too. Like like you know, in America, we claim to care about security, but we're allowing people to fly anywhere they want without an ID. We can't claim to care about COVID, yeah, but, but we pack these facilities yeah. five hundred hundred percent sure. of capacity it's like there's no consistent argument let's here. get to the cash thing go ahead and answer that question and then we'll move on to the flight shit because that's another fucking problem yeah let's do it okay so um i, th I think for so basically where, where we found that number from was i started noticing i started getting reports i have a, a couple like sources that were mm -hmm. like in the area they speak spanish so i had uh, one of my spanish speaking sources Went on a flight in McAllen, Texas, was good getting on a flight. And this airport, by the way, I just flew out of McAllen this morning. Mm -hmm. So the air, these these airports are literally filled with these illegal immigrants that are receiving these packages. All of them are the same pretty much, but they have different locations. So on one side, they'll have the locations that they're flying to. And then on the other side, they have what you were talking about was, uh, Dan, was mm -hmm. um, the the I don't speak Spanish. Please help me figure this out. So when my Spanish speaking source asked her, okay, so like, what, what, what's going on? Like, where'd you, where'd you get this? Like, mm -hmm. what'd you get? Blah, blah, blah. So they get, they get clothes. Um, they get, uh, they get money. And she claimed that she got $2,500. And when asked, here's the thing, and th this is just one person, keep this in mind. But when asked it, if it was a charity or a church that gave her the money, she said, no. Now we were talking about this earlier today. Even if it was a charity or a church, how on earth are they giving thousands of people twenty five hundred dollars? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's one. Organization. There's not that many people donate it. There's well, Catholics, right? The Catholic Church Maybe can definitely afford that. But I, why would they? Right. I mean, that's yeah. not really that's not really part of their MO, to be honest. Uh, they, they're more about moving pedophiles around and hiding that. Um, so <laughs> this money is coming from somewhere, certainly from some bad actor that has ill intent for the United States. Correct. I mean, is there any question about that? Yeah, it's qui, it's qui bono. Who yeah. benefits? Who benefits from this? And you can ask who benefits from it to see if it's circumstantial or if it's real. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's real because there's hard evidence of people actually getting uh, funding for it, right? Sure. So it would be it'll be interesting to find out if we ever do who's funding it. Now, well, do you have any guesses of of who is funding this? I think it's a mixture of the United States government as well as the Catholic Church. That's what I put together right now. I, I think I think it's a mixture of the two. Okay. Like they're, they're probably, I mean, look, if the government's involved, they're using cutouts to do it. It's the same way you used to, we used to pay fucking Iranian, uh, Iranians for weapons back in the day and shit like that. It's the same way that if we go into, if we're in a uh, low, visibil low visibility operational environment now, you can't just walk up with a suitcase full of money or a pallet full of for money. Sure. You know what I mean? You have to use cutouts. Usually the cutouts are fucking assholes, right? Right. They're drug dealers or fucking weapon smugglers. Typically, uh, it is what it is. Um, that, so... My, my question is, I guess, are they, do you think they're receiving that money before they cross the border or when, uh, uh, when they get when over they get here? I think they're, I think they're receiving the money right when they get out of the, uh, they get released from the def detention facility. So that means that's, that's what I think. If the U S government is complicit in this in any way, that means they're very likely liaising with some kind of fucking organized crime element in Southern United States to make that transition happen. There's no way they're, they're not setting up FEMA camps and handing out fucking packets with 2,500 bucks in it. There's something nefarious happening. Yeah, and I, look, I can I can understand why the Catholic Church might be involved is because look, the, it's no secret, obviously that yeah, uh, America is very Catholic. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah not but not only way, very Catholic, when but I so say is Catholic Church. Mexico, Sorry, what you yeah, Mexico and uh, South and Central America. There's there's a lot of Catholics there. You would be getting essentially a lifelong Catholic who's probably going to go to the church and then donate money and and X, Y, and Z. Um, for the other part of it, Dan, if you were talking I mean, about the, a, the just bef to wrap up what you just said right there, there's also the possibility if the, if the Catholic Church is involved, they're doing it because it's a humanitarian crisis, and it is right. Yes, there's, there's some chance of that. That doesn't give them the right to subvert our laws, but it, there, there's too, a lot of stuff going on here. I don't want to fucking just denigrate somebody. Uh, absolutely, to right. Uh, absolutely, and, 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 and I didn't mean to say that. It yeah, just yeah, for sure. it, it just seems. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I want to clarify one thing too. I don't mean like the Catholic Church just as a whole. I think uh, what I what I mean is like I think I think it is like local 
mm. uh, churches in McAllen in the area that are assisting with Now that's this. a different story because where the fuck that's, are they? That's more of that what I mean. I don't mean like in in general, but right, I do yeah. mean. But the, the only thing is, I don't know how to sm how a small church can afford that. Yeah, I mean they can't if the government's giving them money, right? And it, but to be honest, to be able to hide something like that, they're they're skimming budgets somewhere. Somebody will find that for sure, unless it's in a black of probes. And you, I mean, that's a whole other situation if they're doing that shit. Yeah, and if it's if the, if the government is involved, um, it, it could be for two reasons that I can think of off the top of my head. One would be they don't want the bad PR, so they want to get these people out of here so they're yeah. not linger around the border. Uh, well, I mean, we're and we're about to enter sum summertime. There's going to be a lot of people dying. Yeah. trying to cross and that oh, yeah. heat and everything it's else. It's um, going to get worse. Yeah. It's only going to get worse. The more nefarious option is that they want voters, right? Correct. I mean, that's that was where that was my second guess on it, this. That 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 seems like a wild accusation. But after they've threatened to, to pack the Supreme Court to at, to give statehood to two more states uh, so they can get more uh, Senate votes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've, they've literally threatened to do it already. So when somebody threatens to do something over and over and then it happens, you have to assume they fucking did it right. Uh, yeah, uh, the only thing is, though, I mean, thinking about it out loud. Or you at least have to fucking give it some thought. Yeah, but, but, but thinking is, about it out is loud. This wild conspiracy theory. Though. I think it's well, also, I, I, it's I, crazy I, to assume that every Latino is going to vote Democrat, because as we saw in this last, yeah. last election, a lot of them voted Republican simply because they came from these countries, and they were like, dude, I don't want to live in a country like yeah, that Yeah, do you again. really think Latin uh, Catholic people are going to come up here and buy into the far-left woke shit? After what they've been through down there and all the socialist stuff, there's no fucking way. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I don't think James, so. What that, you're saying? You guys, that's a that's a really interesting point that you just brought up there, and I, uh, I think I think, I mean, I I, I think you got to ask yourself the question: if if Hispanic Americans were overwhelmingly voting Republican, they were conservatives, which by the way, uh, culturally they are conservative people. Mm. That's why we have a lot of great people like uh, Anthony Cabas, one of my good buddies, that is making that move of trying to educate kind of uh you know the latino community like hey listen that's that group of people you don't want anything to do with that here you know listen to listen to freedom and 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 folks on the right listen to what they have to say but um i think you have to ask yourself if they were to overwhelmingly vote republican would that would this be ended right now would there would that wall be finished tomorrow yes i say joking 100 like. percent. it would be that border would be sealed up as tight as you could possibly there'd be a fucking moat with alligators in it um <laughs> if if they were voting that's what Republican. i'm saying so that's what i'm saying like i think i think historically speaking they're pretty used to yeah we're gonna get the majority of that vote yeah. and it, it there's not really a downside besides obviously the humanitarian crisis but when it comes down to it like i i don't think these people have proven to me that they give a shit I don't think I don't think they've proven they quite literally uh, uh, Trump Trump, you know, implementing remain in Mexico, get rid of getting rid of catch and release, saying mm. if you send your unaccompanied child here, they will not be let in. So don't freaking do it yeah. is one. It's incredibly dangerous and you have to be like insane to do it. Do not encourage people to do this. Well, first thing that Biden does, you know, end construction or, or at least pause, but more event and construction of the wall where I was, it was completely open. You could literally walk across our border like you could walk across your living room. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just completely open. There's just you can actually see the brand new wall, and then uh, uh, there's thousands of pounds of steel just sitting next to it that are that are ready to be built, already paid for. Um, but oh, sorry, sorry. So so uh, ending the building of the wall, mm -hmm. um, uh, reinstating catch and release, and getting rid of the remain in Mexico policy. So now you're basically just saying, come on in. Yeah. Come on, like, come on. We have an open border policy. It's it's really not much different than an open border policy. Do you have photos of this? Because thus far in the media, I've I saw one. It was blurry uh, of the kids in cages that that has recently come out in the last, I don't know, seventy two hours. But other than that, I I've seen nothing from the media down there. Do you did you get photos and videos of of everything that you saw when you were there? Okay, so I wasn't one of the people that went to the facilities just because I was working on other things, but I got a lot of footage of like caravans, 60 plus people, which is considered a small caravan, by the way, uh, when it comes to, like groups of, of illegal immigrants crossing the US. Usually it was like five to 10 that would pop out of the bushes every like 15 minutes, uh, especially at night. And I got video of all of that. I filmed mm. everything. I actually even filmed where you can, where it shows you where the wall was the the construction of the wall was paused so i got drone shot uh footage of that uh, my buddy eric helped me with that and and we really showed you know people 
what it looks like down there, how easy it is to cross this border and how easy it is to get across. And basically what you're telling them, you're, you're telling cartels, OK, well, yeah, we don't we don't take you guys. Or, sorry. Yeah, we, we, we don't take you guys seriously. Uh, business is booming. Cool. Keep it booming. Go for it. We'll, we'll actually make your jobs easier. Don't worry. Right. Um, with this footage, are you putting it up on your YouTube channel? I know you have a, a, a pretty decent following on YouTube. Uh, it's at youtube.com slash uh, James Kluke. Where, where is that? Where is that video going, by the way? So a lot of that footage was uh, I, I tweeted it out, put it on Instagram, but I mm. am creating um, I started a, uh, a vlog and vlogs for, you know, everyone. It's the thing where you go out there and you look like the biggest jackass uh, in the world filming yourself talking about stuff. But the footage is really useful. And we, and we have I, I have like the first uh, uh, vlog, like political vlog on YouTube or at least the only right now. Yeah. And uh, I yeah. show people kind of behind the scenes what's going on. So I did a vlog of my trip to the border. I'll be posting just to show people really how it is down there and people will get a really good idea of kind of what's going on. So, OK, so let's let's get back on track here. Uh, people are coming across the border, getting uh, caught and then released, which is the current policy. Right. Uh, and from from what you said uh, to me the other day, they're not being given a court date or anything like that. They're just being released. And I don't, I'm not sure what I'm sure, the plan. I'm sure some of them are, but many For of them sure. aren't. They're, I mean, I, they're too overflowed. They don't have time. They don't have time to do that. Right. Even, court if, dates. even if they are. Them. Yeah. Even if they are given a court date, they're not showing up uh, for the most part because they know what's going to happen. So <clears throat> uh, no retainer, no bail, no bond, nothing like that. And I'm not sure how the government intends on contacting them after the fact. It's not like they've got fucking iPhones or addresses. Uh, but anyways, uh, the next step in that is to get the money from whomever is giving it out and then jump on a plane. How the fuck is TSA allowing these people to fly without identification? Yeah. That's what I haven't figured out yet. I honestly have no clue. I, I think I think they're getting some sort of spe like that. That's where that's where the government's getting involved is is they might even be paying for their flights. I don't know. I don't I don't know. And, and for some reason, people aren't really talking about it. like they, they won't answer these questions. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure we could. I'm sure we'll find out soon. But um as of, as of right now, I've had personally, and I'm just speaking for myself because this is just what I've been working on. I've been having trouble figuring that out. Um, I think that obviously the government gives them sort some sort of pass to, yep, you're an illegal immigrant. You can go to L.A. and or right. wherever. And you can see on these envelopes, it's different city. I mean, there, a lot of them are going to places in Texas. A lot of them go to Dallas or L.A. or New York or whatever. Yeah, because I'm on so your Twitter on. right now. Bob, are we able to pull up? Uh, any of the pictures or anything off of his Twitter and put it on, up on screen. Um, go to James Klug on Twitter here because I, I think these pictures will be helpful. Uh, not this one. Uh, go go back to the his main feed real quick. Um, yes. So this one right here. Um, you can clearly put that up on full screen. You can clearly see this envelope. It's got a number on it, thirty five ninety. Please help me. I do not speak English. Uh, what plane do I do need, I need to, take? to take? Thank you for your help. Um, and it's look, it's a Manila envelope, the same as you would get for any child who's yep. entering school and things yeah, like that. It's like a welcome packet. Yeah, like a welcome packet. Uh, the next one, scroll to the next one here. Um, it's got actual flights here. Um, the first one says uh, United. Boy, I don't want to say it, 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 it is an A, and possibly United Airlines. I'm going to say possibly because I, I can't make out what the rest of the letters are underneath their hand. Uh, well, it look, says to be clear, McAllen, 5.01 p.m., yeah. Houston, 6.17, Houston to, New to Newark, New Jersey. 7.40 to 12 or 7 a.m. Yeah. So, so, yeah, they're, going, they're going everywhere. To be clear, and, to be clear on this, uh, the airlines wouldn't check their ID unless they knew for a fact they were not Americans, right? And in southern Texas, getting on a plane not being able to speak English, not that big a deal, frankly. It happens quite a bit. So the airline wouldn't be involved in this. It would be TSA. The only people that can make yeah. this happen is TSA. And the only time anybody fucking, the, the other part of it is the only time, uh, and, and FAA would have to also be involved, actually, because the only time that somebody doesn't get their ID checked when they go through the gate or their passport checked is when they're registered as an American citizen, right? So when the, per when the ticket was purchased, it was purchased for somebody that was presumably an American citizen. Otherwise, the airlines would be, they would have to ask for a passport. You understand? For sure. Yes, because look, I, I've flown multiple times throughout COVID and I always get ID'd. I, shit, one time my, my ID was past the thing because of COVID and I couldn't go to the DMV and they were like, do you have any other form of identification? Yeah. How do you get through security with this? And you know, 
the the other portion of this is looking at your other pictures here on uh, on your Twitter feed here. I, I noticed a lot of these flights are arriving after midnight. Mm. That's when things are really lax because I, I take a lot of these late night flights and there's only a handful of us that, that get off, you know, in these airports. And it's mostly closed, so you can't go into shops or anything else. And you also can't disrupt people waiting for planes because this is typically the last flight of the night before they shut down mm. the airport. So the timing makes sense. But how are they getting through security is what I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what we're I, I don't have the answer, but I, I think I think that's kind of where the government is involved. I mean, the government is absolutely there in some way. They're allowing these people to pretty much pick where they want to go, say that they have family somewhere and get them a flight directly. Also, you mentioned the evening. Usually every single person that I've talked to that's left McAllen in the past couple of days has pretty much said, yeah, my flight was roughly 80 to 90 percent uh illegal immigrants and they all left around you know from three to five p.m well which is pretty insane that's a flight filled with 80 to 90 percent and with covid you're wearing masks you don't know anybody who's on these goddamn things at all and it's you know there's not a lot of conversation on any of these flights because everybody's wearing a mask yeah if you were going to do it now would be the time to do it because when covid ends and you you look around and there's you know ninety percent of the plane is filled with immigrants. You're gonna say yeah. something. Well, here's what we'll do. It, so, and uh, I'm not profiling here. I, <laughs> no, me neither. Me neither. Um, Absolutely. They they no. What I'm saying is they all have these these envelopes. Every every single one. They all walk around the envelope. Do they we have it in their lap? Do we like have more just images? Chill with it right here. Yeah. Yes. So we we have more images. Uh, Bob, bring up the ones of the the cages there. Oh, there's a different one. Well, there's another. Yeah. Uh, if you scroll back. Another one. All of them um, have these packets here. Um, that's the same one from before. Yeah, with the same flights on them. But uh, uh, scroll down a little bit, Bob. Uh, past that, past that. There you go, right there. Um, who took these photos here? It's, it's got the daily collar on it. Is, are these current? Is this what's actually going on inside these camps? That's going to be George Ventura, um, who oh, I yeah. retweeted. It says, it, it he, says in I the was, caption, it's uh, Representatives Babin and Jackson. Yeah, so they, they took are. those. They they, yeah, they, they got those photos. photos. Uh, so that's from the facility down in McAllen. And that's or I believe that's current. McAllen. That's current. That's yeah, that's current. That was this week. That was uh two days ago. Days yeah. of today. Okay, yeah. Scott. That was yeah, this week. yeah. You can go to the next one, and then this one appears to have the the children in it. Um, how are are people not outraged by this, and how is the media not picking up? Any of I'll these photos I'll, I'll and putting this, this out into the world? I'll tell you which this. which one are we looking at? The, the, the children here that are inside this. Inside, inside, like the the circle thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you this: it should piss you off, no matter what you believe politically. And yes. If it doesn't, yes. Then you're a piece of shit. Yeah. Let's just be real about that. Uh, the other thing is, with all this, um, I, I really, if if you're a member of TSA or any kind of airport security or some other government government agency, and you're allowing this to happen, you're a piece of shit. If you're seeing it happen and you don't feel like you can do anything, you can fucking tell me. And we'll put it out there. Get me some evidence that this is happening because it's, it really seems like it is, right? Mm -hmm. Get me some fucking evidence that people are being skirted through security and sent off randomly throughout the goddamn country with no ID and no fucking plan, right? If you, if you're in, if you work for one of the airlines and you're seeing weird shit, send me pictures, send me video, whatever you got, you can send it to, uh, you can go to fucking, uh, At Dan Holloway on, well, on no, Instagram. don't send it to my social media cause that shit gets monitored all the time. Oh, it does. You can send it to, uh, you can go to our website. Uh, it's drinkybros.com forward slash justice. And if you see some fucked up shit like that, please send it to us and we will expose the fuck out of these people. Because this is not, by the way, immigration is not a partisan issue. It shouldn't be. Why would it be? Why would that be? Why would that be? And anyway, it's like education. Why would education be a partisan issue? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. People are trying to come in that don't fucking belong here, right? But that's, that's step one. Step two is why, right? Oh, it's, it sucks there, so we got to fucking do something, and we have to decide what to do, but it's not a partisan issue. No, right? left or right, you should be outraged by this. Yeah. Um, well, you, you guys, uh, another, I think, I think the most frustrating thing for me is, like, I talk to people I disagree with all the time, mm. and, and rarely do I get, uh, I mean, actually, like, never do I get actually, like, you know, pissed off. And going down here and filming this last five days that I was down at the southern border, this is something that actually for the whole crew it's just we're seeing it we're see i witnessed hundreds of unaccompanied children showing up just just no parents cbp agents are like yep all those all those kids are by themselves i witnessed hundreds if not thousands of of you know illegal immigrants crossing the united states 
Um, and one of the main things is, you know, last, let's say 2020, February, there was around, what was it, 40,000 uh, apprehensions at the southern border. Last mm-hmm. uh, January, February, March, there was 33,000 roughly. Okay. Last month, we were looking at over 100,000. This month, we're expecting right around 150,000 apprehensions. This is it, the, the part that's most frustrating about all of this is it was completely preventable. What we were doing was working. Getting rid of catch and release was working. Implementing Remain in Mexico was working. And it's not like, oh, I just don't want a bunch of people, like a bunch of illegals in the U.S. Like It's, it's not just that, even though that's a totally reasonable uh, uh, argument. It's again, it's, it's the, it's the environment that it creates. These people are sending unaccompanied minors. These people get, these unaccompanied minors get kidnapped. They get, they get raped. They get sexually abused. They get physically abused. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's really horrifying stuff. And the last thing we want to do is be feeding these cartels even more of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah can, to like, circle back there, on that number, it's 3250. 3250. Yeah. I'm okay. looking at my notes. Yeah, 3250. That's that's what I saw as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. So what? And now it's it's even so, we're we're backtracking on this problem, uh, as it started. Mexicans, particularly in north central Mexico, fleeing cartels started to come here a while back, right? I mean, we've always had Mexican seasonal labor. That's where Cesar Chavez came from and unionized and blah blah blah. But it's become a reaction to fear and poverty more so over the last 20 years or so, right? Started with Mexico, particularly that area, then some of the bigger cities. Then it became Guatemalans, and then we got, you know, the lovely MS-13 from all that bullshit mm-hmm. uh, flowing around all over uh, Southern California. <clears throat> yep. And now fucking uh, 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 Honduran immigrants are f- flooding into Guatemala right. to eventually get to Mexico, to right. eventually get to the United States, right? Yeah. So it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse as things go on. And anytime you, if, if people think, if, if they are conditioned to believe that there's a better chance for their child to survive, if they put them through this crazy fucked up process than it is to get murdered there or whatever the fucking, whatever they think might be going on there, right? If, mm. it's, if it's real or perceived, they're absolutely gonna do it. People by and large are gonna err on the side of trying to protect their children and their, their uh, lineage, right? right? And if you give them the incentive, then they're gonna fucking do it even if it's a risk. And we have no tolerance for that risk. We have no tolerance for watching children get abused and, and dying. We have no tolerance for it. They know that, right? Yeah. So it's like basically what they're doing is they're holding their baby and they're staring us right in the eyes, mm-hmm. right? And they're like, is this motherfucker going to catch it if I throw it? Yeah. And we're saying yes. Yeah. So they throw their yeah. fucking baby and maybe we catch it and maybe we don't because we've only got this one set of arms. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. fucked up. It cannot continue like this. It's not humanitarian. Yeah. It's really, really well said. It's not humanitarian to, to continue to allow this shit to happen. Like it's how in what way is it humanitarian for Biden, the Biden administration and leftists in general to tell the fucking to tell Latin America that if you send your people here, they got a decent chance of making it because we're fucking weak. That's not humanitarian because thousands of people die. People get raped. I mean, these aren't fucking it's not Uber picking these motherfuckers up. Yeah, it is drug cartels. God damn it. What do you think they're going to do? Like he said, if somebody's got that band on, this is they're paid for already. And they already got that money and this little kid starts making noise. They're going to fucking throw it in the Rio Grande. And that's what they did. Yeah. As a matter of fact, and a fucking CBP guy had to jump in and save it. You know what I mean? These people. Yeah, are there's a lot evil. they missed, too. There's a lot, there's they, a miss. lot they miss. CBP agents or, or, or um, I know that that one was the, the one that had the story about it. I forgot what it was. Uh, Texas Ranger. Um, but like, I mean, this happens all oh, the time. It was the you know, these people would rather not world, be, yeah. get, they would rather not get caught. So they don't mind tossing a kid in the water if it's an inconvenience or yeah. tossing a kid over a wall because it's safer for them because they, again, they look at these, these human beings, they look at them as a product. They look mm. at them as a drug. Uh, uh, it's a business and businesses is, is booming right now because yeah. of the Biden administration. It's frustrating. It's, it's infuriating is what it is. It's $14 million a day. That's how much they're making right now. 14, the, the cartels are making $14 million a day to move these people around. Uh, I'm looking at the rest of your Instagram here, James, and I'm just scrolling down here. Uh, Bob, bring up a video on March 28th. Um, so this yeah, was... Uh, uh, no, no, no. Um, I'm sorry, not Instagram, Twitter. Oh, you got me. Yeah, uh, Twitter. Uh, scroll down to March 28th, the video he shot uh, next to the <clears throat> border here. Um, Keep going. Uh, there. There you go. 
So uh, what we're showing here, James, I don't know if you can see it, is, is the, the wall and the unfinished wall. Are you saying that people can just walk right through that? It, it's a drone shot here of what you have. Is, is one side Mexico and the other side is the United States? Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, so uh, the sign, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm pulling it up right here. So, sure. Uh, actually, all right, I was there so I can tell you. Um, so basically what it is is, yeah, it, right after the wall is not just Mexico. Mm -hmm. but shortly after it's Mexico right there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as soon as you get through those woods and stuff, uh, you're able to cross into the United States by, uh, you can skip if you want. I, I don't care what you do. You can, you can get across that wall that does not exist with ease. Mm. Okay. And, and the rest of those trucks that were in that shots that were lined up, were those trucks that were attempting to build the rest of it? And now that uh, you know, it's, it's been terminated. They're just kind of left there. That's exactly what it is. Oh, is it really? We showed up, we showed up and there's construction workers there. They're actually, uh, the project's paid for. So they're just kind of hanging out, waiting for word that they can continue. The, they're, they're, I, I even talked to a handful of them. They're still just, they're hanging out. They're, they're ready to go. There's thousands of pounds of steel, uh, you know, steel wall that are, mm -hmm. that are just, you can kind of see them stacked. Uh, next to those trucks that's that's the wall just sitting there hanging out it's 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 ready to be built yeah and i'm scrolling through your your twitter here i mean because you have endless pictures of of all of this i mean there's there's more packets with american airline flights on here uh dallas to boston uh dallas to columbus ohio um man yeah you guys i i uh, actually had it, it was uh, I had the huge pleasure of being joined by uh, Mark Morgan. Mm. He's the former, former commission, director, yeah. commissioner of acting commissioner of the CBP. Yep. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Tom Homan, who was the oh, yeah. former acting director of ICE. Yeah, I've talked to him. I don't him know before, if you guys. Yeah. 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 He's 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 a beast. I don't know if you guys remember that AOC video with him. Yeah. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not one to be trifled with. <laughs> no. But they they joined us uh, one night. They were out there. Man, respect to those guys because they're out there with us at like 1 a.m. or something, which I was staying up till like 5 each night. But yeah. still, like 1 a.m., that's pretty impressive. And they were out there with us. And, and these guys are the experts of this stuff. Yeah. And, and I, I interviewed Mark Morgan. We were kind of looking at this big group, maybe 30 or so. Uh, I think it was all women and children. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, every single one of those are, are going to be let into the United States. Well, every single one. Uh, who, who, are, who are Mark and, and Homan working for now? Like, are they just out there trying to help or are they working for somebody? I don't exactly know uh, what they're doing exactly, like, like their full time thing. I don't know what it is right now. Mm -hmm. I know that they both do a lot of media. I know, um, I know uh, Mark is working with Newsmax a lot. I know Tom is uh, working with Fox a lot. Mm. Uh, I think, I think a big thing is just kind of spreading awareness and, and mm. shedding light on this situation with their expertise. But I mean, I asked him what he thought about this, and he was livid because I asked Mark what he thought about all this going on. He was livid yeah. because, you know, they worked hard with CVP to come up with the best solution to discourage families, discourage people from uh, making that dangerous journey right. from Central America to the United States border. They worked very hard with Border Patrol on that to make sure that they're, you know, you're never going to eliminate it. You're, it's not going to happen. That's not a reality, but we can reduce it. And yeah. I'll settle for reducing these numbers all day. And he's just, he was just livid. He was, he, I, I had I a short interview so, with yeah. him and he was just absolutely livid. I would yeah. So. And, and then all these border patrol agents, man, their, their hands are tied as well. We've had a, numerous ones on the show to talk yeah. about this issue over the years. And it's one thing after another. And then you, you, you know, come into a guy like, uh, Brugman, you know, and it's, yeah. it's, it, if you do something wrong or you're, you have, you have the fear of doing something wrong, then you could be sued and then prosecuted and all this other stuff. It, it, let me ask you, why do you do this? Are you funded by somebody or are you just doing this to, to shed light on what's going on in the world? Um, I mean, I, I do it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the second question first, basically. Um, pretty much I do this because I saw where the left was going in this country. I saw where the how far left they are going. I saw the power in the media. And, you know, I actually left a job that was pretty comfy to uh, – to, to basically be broke and, and, fo and focus on YouTube, focus on on getting this information out there, whether it be a gun debate or whether it be immigration debate, combating this, basically, it's it's just a never ending, a never ending, uh, basically, 
list of craziness going on when it comes to what the left comes up with every single day in this country. And I just figured I wanted to combat it. So pretty much dropped everything, you know, focused on YouTube, focused on Instagram, focused on Twitter, getting this information out there. That's why I go to riots, because none of the other media, you're not going to see CNN running in there. You know, no. filming people looting, rioting, burning down a building. You're not going to see them doing that. And, and when they do, what do they what do they say? Oh, it's fiery, but mostly peaceful. Yeah, it's yeah. like you get you guys are a joke. And, and, and you know, I think that's why you are seeing a handful of people. It's not many because it's not I, I'm not going to tell you like, oh, like, oh, yeah, it's easy to stay up at f- till 5 a.m. and wake up at 10, you know, to do news hits mm. like like. Filming all of this going on, it's it's pretty depressing, but it's important work. And I, I you know, personally, um, I, I, I find more purpose in my work now than I ever have in my life. Now, as for funding, uh, right now, pretty much fully self-funded. Uh, but, you know, people, people donate, people, people uh, uh, sponsor the videos, mm-hmm. people do all that stuff. And um, I, I will be joining... Uh, probably a a network here here shortly just to keep this going take it to the next level and and keep doing what i want to do yeah because you keep covering what what the important stuff that i want to cover you know you're one of those guys who's always constantly in it um you know we've followed your career ever since the last time you were on the show and uh no matter what it is you're there no one really (laughs) else is and if you don't know about a guy like you I, i i've never seen this footage before I would never get to see anything like this on on the news or anything that I follow on a daily basis, which is a lot. I mean, I, I record you know upwards of 125 shows a month out of this, and uh, I, I try to do my research on all of it. I have not seen any of the footage like like you have shown today, um, which is pretty shocking. But I, I would also imagine that it's extremely dangerous. Did you run into anything uh, at the border? When you went down there to shoot this shit, like were, were people trying to throw you out of there or get you arrested or anything? Um, we only, uh, not, not, not really. Um, <laughs> in La Jolla, the, the officers are, are, are pretty um, strict when it comes to, because it's a, it's a tough area. Mm-hmm. So they'll pull you over for just about everything. And I had a taillight out on my rental car and that ended up, going over really poorly for me <laughs> that's, that's kind of a random funny story but like as for uh anything threatening no but you would be right to suggest yeah it's not a safe thing to do you if you run into the wrong guy i just so happen to be around the people that are turning themselves into cbp agents uh which maybe we could touch on in a sec because yeah. that's really interesting but um if you run into one of the people that don't want to get caught maybe a human smuggler or whatever it is yeah, I mean, you're you're uh, you're you could be in a lot of trouble, and so yeah, it's not safe. I don't recommend people if maybe if you're not experienced with this type of stuff, or uh, you know, a young woman or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 not safe, but it, it is important, and that's kind of what I was touching on just a second ago. You know, this work for me, and I definitely encourage people to get involved in, in, in street reporting and all that stuff. Uh, I always, I always encourage people to get involved because it is important work, and and that's great that that you're finally seeing that's this footage right now. But you know, this needs to be stuff that that Americans are seeing, uh, all Americans are seeing, because the media, it's it's an activist. We we have an activist media. Mm-hmm. They will choose to completely ignore an absolute crisis at our southern border because it is politically inveni- uh, convenient. Think about yeah. how disgusting that is. Any Anything that is politically well, I mean, convenient, it's, it's just they will as, ignore. It's, it's just as disgusting as Ronald Reagan uh, ignoring AIDS, frankly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. And it's yeah. Got, yeah, absolutely. It's got, you, you have to hold people accountable no matter what you fucking think. Right. Left or right, yeah, like if it it's if, wrong is, it, is wrong. Know, it's yeah. pretty easy to call it out. Wrong is wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's we're in a we're in a big fucking pickle right now, and I only say that because I just watched the Sandlot, and they say that phrase thirty goddamn times. In the well, movie. they were in a pickle when they, that dog had that baseball. I was I was frightened for my life. Well, you were forty years old at the time when that movie came uh, out. I was sure. three, a baby, a baby. <laughs> I just saw it about a month ago. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it's it's we're in a big pickle. People can't divorce themselves from uh, partisanship at this point. It, I, I would give it all up if I could just have honest news back, and and that's well, that's, that's really all I want is just a, honest news back, and and uh, not still, trying to question every single fucking thing I read and see 
on television, whether it's yeah. true or false, or what the actual intentions are behind it. There's I a really couple want. of there's a couple of organizations that still do that. I mean, it's more, more so it's people like him independently doing it. Yeah, but there are a couple of organizations. Scriber is one of them. They do pretty well. You know, Scriber I mean? does great. It's yeah. staying. They don't, it's they're like what the Associated Press should be essentially. Right. Yeah. But the Associated Press totally are a bunch agree. of cunts, frankly. Yeah. Uh, we on, on our fake news show today, I went and I detailed how the Associated Press helped overturn the election for Rutherford B. Hayes and stop deconstruction and continue Jim Crow. Uh, those they are evil people since the very beginning. None of this shit's new. We all think that this fucking media bias stuff and the, and the wild bullshit that goes on is new. It's not new. It's been going on forever. I'm not right? saying it's new. I'm just saying it's getting worse. It's not it's not getting worse. It's getting worse again. Right. It's going back to the cycle of where it's the worst it can be. And now we just have evidence of it. That's all. That's the only difference is we have evidence now. Like yeah, I think I think the only way it's I, I think in, in the ways it's getting worse is that it's not just media now. It's 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 media plus tech plus all these corporations that control every aspect of your life. Right. So it's it's a lot more than just the media. It's it's right. kind of everything. And like. You guys, I, I, I don't want to circle back too far, but, oh, but I did want to mention Whoa, something. Careful, Whoa, Jen, Jen Blasky. We, we, we don't circle back yeah, here. Yeah, Jen. <laughs> we don't do that here. I can't, I can't say that anymore. Put a red know, wig and go, go to the White House with that it, attitude. Doesn't it suck that she ruined that phrase for everybody? <laughs> well, she not really. She ruined it. Hollywood ruined, ruined it, too. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, no shit. I, I, I wish that woman the best, but she uh, she's, I don't know. I don't know how long she's going to last. She, she's not doing that, that job super well uh, but anyways I, I was saying uh as for the um oh uh the capital siege the the, the yeah. whatever you want to call it the capital riot whatever um for me i do a lot of commentary right i do a lot of commentary but when it comes to reporting it kind of feels weird to put a twist on something that's not true yeah. it's mm -hmm. dirty it's it's dirty and i covered the capital riot i had a lot of democrats reaching out to me that were like james that footage was crazy like and i'm not patting myself on the shoulder what i'm saying is here is you know a lot of these independent journalists and stuff uh they do a lot of people they do a good job and it's important to do a good job on like the the uh the big things left and right so capital riot i i did that media talked about it they still talk about it mm -hmm. to this day mm -hmm. border crisis Border, I can't talk right now. Yeah. Border crisis. I did that. Uh, media's completely. It's like they have horse blinders on. It's it's insane. We didn't see. I didn't see anyone down there like getting in 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 the thick of it, filming these these groups. We didn't see anyone down there. We were down there for like four or five nights. Yeah, because it's crazy I, to I, see what they pick and choose to hyper focus on, and not just hyper focus on, but obsess over. They still talk about the James, the, you, the Capitol riot, like almost you, every well, day. I look, I look at your Twitter, and it seems like you're the only person there, and it's just kind of like like you're on your own Hollywood shoot. And I'm like, where the fuck is everybody else covering this? Yeah, well, for sure. Have you? I I don't remember if we've had. I think we had this con and close your ears because I'm obviously about to talk about the master switch, right? You, you gotta, oh, I'm pretty boy. sure. I and the art you, of stealing by Ricky Henderson. Did not, slide head first in the life. I, did I? I sent you. Uh, the master switch, right? Or the link, are you guys buddies? Were you fraternity brothers or something? No, we've never even met. In no, Tim Wu. Tim Wu. Oh, no, I don't even know who he is. <laughs> guy, he loves this fucking guy. I couldn't, There's like, two people who've read this book <laughs> no, Dan this, and Tim's dad. This is one of the most important books ever written. <laughs> I, I, I understand. I, I would just, yeah, it is. I, I don't know what it's we're talking about right here. now. Yeah. It's, it's called the ma there's funny. a book called The Master Switch by a guy named Tim Wu, and it details how okay. from the very beginning of human history, but it's particularly here in America, there's been a, 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 a cons not conspiracy is not the right word, but government and industry has worked together to box out the little guy, right, and to also fucking create monopolies, uh, and and so the government can have control over things. Uh, Ma Bell is a good example of that. Uh, they stopped the internet as we know it today, would have happened somewhere around the 1960s if they had not gotten involved. Yeah, that and the, the Beastie Boys talked about it. Ma Bell uh, got the ill communication. So. Uh, no, that's not the same thing. Uh, but also, this, was, this but. thing that I'm talking about with Rutherford Hayes, the AP and Western Union got involved because they wanted Southern, they wanted troops out of the South enforcing <laughs> shit so they could do whatever the fuck they wanted again, right? This has been going on since the very beginning of this country. Uh, and it's, it's not going to stop, obviously. Like that's that's the problem with power, and our fucking forefathers realized that shit. They realized that the more power you get, the more power you want, and that is a fucking death spiral for any organization. They realized that we need to limit power and give people the ability to limit that power with force, right? If the fucking first plan doesn't work out, they were very smart in that way, and we are not executing on their plan very well. I, look to me, 
going forward with this, James, I don't see a solution anytime soon. Solution for what? For, for the border crisis. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, how, what would that even look nothing. like? Nothing. I see nothing on the horizon to solve uh, this re whatsoever. Re-implement Trump's policies. Get, but that's, that's good step, luck. That's step one. That's a pipe <laughs> that's dream. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd yeah. like to fly. And I'd like to be as jacked as Ryan Reynolds in Deadpool after whatever cycles he was on. That is not going to happen anytime soon. So what, what's an honest take here on, on, on when you think this, this will be solved, if it will be solved? Uh, okay, well, this is my thought. By the way, Deadpool's a great movie. But it's okay. uh, my, thought on, um, my thought on when it'll be solved, I think that the pressure is going to get so, so big and I think it's going to get probably so out of control and this is what they're expecting we mentioned earlier in the show that uh heat's going to be cranking up it's going to get more deadly it's going to get more out of control um i know that there are estimates all over the place on x amount of unaccompanied minors showing up to the southern border twenty-five thousand right. stuff like that um and every single border patrol agent that i spoke with every single sheriff that i spoke with down there keep in mind like you know they're not really supposed to speak with you so let's just say i overheard them but um you know they're preparing for the absolute worst and i think i think it might get too bad to where they can't ignore it mm -hmm. because right now what we have what we have right now is just anybody and everyone can come in and mm -hmm. i think that rumor is spreading like wildfire among of course Central it is. americans of course and i it think is. it's going to continue to get worse and i think they might have to re-implement re remain in mexico or something i think they're going to have to do a, a piece of go back to a piece of what Trump had before, because I think it will get too bad. Well, I mean, ultimately what they'll do is what has happened in the past. Anytime any good fucking strategy is taken out of place, they'll reimplement the phases one by one until the entire thing is reconstructed. That's how it's happened. I'm not sure. Get, I'm not going to go on a fucking rant about this one because I've been on enough rants today, but you can go back and, and research this and find multiple examples of this happening, right? With containment, Back in the day in the Cold War, just go look at this shit. It's fucking stupid. It would be, though, such a huge walk back for the for the Democrats at this point because they ran on this. This is one of the, the big issues that they ran on to win the election was, yeah. was this. That I don't see it happening. I see a lot more silence, a lot more silence from the media. And it's going to take dudes like you that actually go out and shoot footage and some of this to go viral. Um, and it's got to be somebody you can trust. Like... I, like you seem like an honest dude. Uh, we haven't known each other that long, obviously, but uh, I, like I look at your footage, you don't seem to have a particular slant on one thing to say the same way as like a, a James O'Keefe, right? Where you're like, hey man, how fucking heavily edited was this footage and everything else? I think it's gonna take more people like you that go down there. Um, and I think it's gonna take somebody from the Democratic side to actually go down, like an AOC. Somebody that big to go down there and be like, all right, enough is enough. I went down there the first time with my white shirt on and, and pressed my hands against the cage and all that shit. I got to do this again to get some attention towards this. Or Which, by the way, is super screwed up to leverage what was going on for political gain. Yeah, well, to I be mean, fair, think uh, about that for Candace Owens did the same thing. Yeah. Making memes and shit about it. It's a fucking serious situation, asshole. It, it is. It is. Like but she, I mean, look, to be, to be fair... Uh, uh, you know, people make memes and shit. Yeah, we lo look at them and laugh. It's funny, whatever the fuck, because that's how we deal with fucked up shit. But if you're a public yeah. facing figure like Candace Owens, who apparently likes to take politics seriously now, all of a sudden, uh, uh, to put something like that out, she's just as culpable as fucking AOC is. Same goddamn human being. She just flips sides because she knew that being token on the other side would fucking benefit her in the long run. She is full of shit, 100%, by the way. I don't know her personally, so I can't I can't speak on that. But uh, where are you going next, James? It seems like you're always going someplace crazy. Um, were were you? Was there any thought of you going to that Oregon bullshit where they stormed the, the Capitol there? Um. Well, I think um, that's a good question. I think we're going to focus on some some YouTube content and stuff like that. Because uh, aside from reporting, and, and by the way, I really appreciate what you're saying about like the you know not noticing a, a bias in it. Because when it comes to reporting, I I, I do feel weird, and, and it's like I think everyone should about putting a twist on something. So I yeah. don't like a normal person. Yeah. I say, hey, this is what this is. Uh, here's the footage. Yeah. And when it comes to content and stuff, obviously it's, it's a little bit different. And, you know, I do consider myself to be a YouTube content creator as well, uh, which is just one of my passions just turns out to be also part of my job, which is great. 
And um, I think we're going to be filming some YouTube videos. Sometimes we do funny political YouTube videos, stuff like that. So I think we're going to do a little bit of that. Um, I might go cover a little bit of the, you know, yeah, Antifa, a little bit of of uh, the things going on in, in, in Seattle, uh, Portland still. Well, what's going However, on? What is next, going on with what that, was right that now? What is going on with Antifa right now? I haven't heard from them in a while. Oh, yeah. They stormed the uh, Capitol building up in up in Oregon. Oh, I didn't I didn't really hear about that. Yeah. They, they, yeah, yeah. They've done they've done a couple things. Uh, the most recent was there was like a drive with like a bunch of like uh, conservatives that were driving their trucks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, Antifa like basically met them at a corner and threw rocks and stuff into their windows and that one guy came out with his gun and pulled it out it's like it's like all these people are a mess but uh you know um i think i think we'll go film a little bit of that mm. it's just antifa doing little things misbehaving here and there and that's that's pretty annoying but the, the biggest thing that's coming up is going to be the uh uh chauvin trial yeah for which sure. is I'm actually a little bit worried uh, yes, yes, for. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that one's going to be nuts. I mean, a lot of a lot of stuff's happening since it started. Actually, just weird stuff. Uh, for some reason, the prosecution, and, and keep in mind, the prosecution in this case is is trying to prosecute the police officer. That's what this is. So mm -hmm. it's not like, anyways. I just wanted to make that clear. So they introduced the fact that he was on drugs all the time. Yes. Right. Yep. And I don't know why. I, I like obviously they want to try to control that narrative because they know what's coming up. Yeah. But I don't man, they if that was their plan, they did not execute it very well. The other thing they did at the trial was they showed all of the footage yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, like every single camera they had. Um, and the the thought process behind that was let's get this out of the way at the beginning of the trial. Uh get it out there so that they, that the defense can't surprise them when mm -hmm. it's their turn. Hopefully people will well, forget about it and then they can turn to that. My personal opinion on this is once they uh, petitioned the Supreme Court up in Minnesota and they were able to get that, that other charge of murder, I think they're, they're definitely going to get one and that will probably appease the people. Now, obviously, it's up to a jury and we don't know what's going to happen, but I'd have a hard time believing in this day and age that they're going to not do anything just based out of fear. Uh, no matter what their actual opinion is of the trial at this point. That's, that's yeah. just a guess on, on my part. Um, because, man, that would be a fucking powder keg if, if they were acquitted all the way around. I, um, I mean, and honestly, I'm not, look, I, I don't have access to the footage. I'm not there. I'm not during the fucking trial or whatever. I, I have no idea what's going to happen. That is just purely I speculation can, I can on tell my you part. Right now, what's going to happen? He's going to get uh, acquitted on all the charges except for the lower charge. He's going to get convicted of that. The, mur the murder one? He's not going to get convicted of murder. Not, not, not the second degree murder, the third degree uh, murder? The third degree, I don't, maybe. I, okay, I, yeah. I, but third, yeah, third degree I, murder it, is but, essentially but, manslaughter, right? Sorry, what you're saying? Just, third, degree, third degree murder is manslaughter. It's, it's, it's five totally years? Charge. Yeah, it's yeah. a completely different charge. Yeah. Uh, it's five years, and then you could probably be out in three, to be honest. Uh, well, if, they, if and, and they'll, the but here's the thing is they'll burn down the city for a third degree. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Yes. And that's why they charge him with second degree in the first place. What, about a, like two weeks after the initial charge? Well, they were pressured into it yeah. by the, the people yeah. there who were and, burning down the city. And at the time, you can go back and watch the footage. Well, I was like, this it, is a huge fucking mistake. Yes. They yeah. bent to some short-term anger. By the time the trial actually happens, people will have forgotten about that bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. They bent to that short-term anger, and then they fucking gave him a charge that they cannot convict him on. There's no fucking way they're getting second-degree murder. Right. Not one chance. Right. Not one chance. Third degree was the right choice at the time, and that's what I said before they even indicted the guy. I was like, it's going to be third degree murder for X, Y, and Z reasons. And it, once they elevated to second, like, fuck. It's like you're asking, to me, that seems like somebody that's trying to start shit. Or you're just so weak that shit gets started anyways. And that's a really good analog for the Biden administration and this immigration thing right now, to be honest. Projecting power is a good thing, mm -hmm. right? It lets people know to stay the fuck away from you. And... There's got to be a better way to do it than what Donald Trump did with Twitter. He was an asshole, frankly, right? And it turned a lot of people off. But his instincts yeah. were correct. His instincts were correct. Alphas fucking rule and people stay the fuck away. We, that, you know, it, we need that. We just don't need it on fucking Twitter. Yeah. Or fucking talking shit to the press. Like, dude, just do your fucking job. With this Chauvin thing, this case is moving at a decent clip. So are you yeah. heading up there soon? Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably be up there maybe. I'll be up there like a week early. Maybe I'll be I'll be up there early, ready to go, but um, or maybe a, a few days early or something. But um, yeah, it's it's coming up. It's coming up. Uh, 
I know a handful of reporters are going to be there. Uh, probably shouldn't mention names, but like uh, you don't have to. Yeah, we'll be, what, what dates? Yeah, we'll be, when are they expecting this to end? Because it's it's uh, we're shooting this on Thursday night, April first. What's your ballpark for for when this will wrap up this trial? I think they were thinking middle of the month. Mm. Shit, so this is coming up. This is coming up quick. Well, then there's going to be deliberation. I, I would expect this deliberation to take some time because of the complex nature of the case one, and because there's two separate charges. It's yeah. probably going to be. I, if I had to guess, I would say a week and a half of deliberation. That's what I would say. Yeah, but Whew. you never, you never really know. It depends on who the fucking jury foreman is and all that stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on. Like how good of a leader is that person? Yeah. Are they able to fucking get everybody on board? If that's the case, but again, it's a, it's very difficult to unpack after they hear all that shit uh, from during the trial that they, they, they then get coached on what these crimes are mm -hmm. right and they, this happens before as well right? correct yeah but they get coached on what does it mean to be guilty of third degree or second degree murder right and does For sure. that that's supposed to be your linear fucking uh page xyz all right is this xyz if it is then yes if not no right mm -hmm. that's the case so it's going to take some time one, one thing that worries me about a lot of this stuff is um you know public opinion kind of swaying what charges should be or, or, right. or whatever and when it comes problem. down to it, it's like it's like the woke it's it's like the woke mob is basically campaigning against you know guilty or uh, innocent until proven guilty they're 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 campaigning against this like it's it's like if they want it to be done they want you to get death penalty they would prefer no trial at this point i mean this is like kind of the logic that i'm seeing here is these people it doesn't matter what the facts are he should be he's guilty of murder it doesn't matter what the facts are like that and, and if you go out you, you talk to people about this they will all say that and it's pretty scary actually it's pretty scary how much people do not care about the facts they don't well, care about well what, you, you, what, yeah you see a video yeah um th that's that strong and intense and everybody's got obviously very strong visceral feelings about seeing that video without listening to the facts or, or, or without seeing the rest of the video because i i was unaware that there was another 14 minutes worth of body cam footage where they were trying to get him in and out of the car and then they they talked to the guy at the the store and they said he seemed like he was on drugs and we, we didn't know what happened you know for me I, i'm not there i'm not on the jury and uh, i'm not watching this trial so I, I don't know what happened that day, you know, um, but uh, but those guys do. And it's a it's a, it's a heavy not, burden. I'm actually not worried about that at all. The system should work as it works. If the guy is guilty, he's guilty. Who gives a fuck? Right? That's what I'm saying. Like, right. I, don't, yeah. I don't care. The outcome of this trial has no bearing on my life whatsoever. I want it to be accurate. That's all. Right. Right. But, so, but sometimes they get it wrong because OJ is on a golf it, course right now looking for the real killers in Vegas. And some look, sometimes they get it wrong. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes they do yeah. get it but wrong. But it is, it is the media's job to set an expectation to be realistic with what's going on. Mm. Instead, what the media has basically been saying is guilty. And then basically what that's going to do is as soon as something happens that's maybe slightly different, I'm not saying he won't be, I'm not saying he's going to get off completely. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. But, but to not say, Oh, there's a chance here or this could happen or this could happen to not inform people. And then for them, because what will happen if something, if he does get off on anything or, or whatever, people will be blindsided. Mm -hmm. They will not expect it. It's going to be yeah. the racist system. They're going to go out and they're going to riot instead of knowing the facts. Like in it, it's, not trying to be totally distracted here, but in sales, it's like you learn this tip where it's like you set the expectation of like an appointment or something right. you're having with someone because it, they're not, it won't hit them and they're going to be like turned yeah. off. Like, what the hell is this? No, yeah. I was expecting that. Okay. Right. You inform me of that. Great. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes here. And I know that's kind of random, but no, it's, it's like, not. No. It's the same. It's the same thing in, in, uh, in, yeah. in, pro, in, in marketing. Actually, if you, if somebody runs into an unexpected cost between the time they add to their cart to the time they check out, there's a 45% chance they're not going to buy that product. That's a huge, that's it's a preponderance. It's almost a fucking majority right? Yeah, yeah. at that point. For so sure. no, it makes total and, sense. And it's, so same thing goes with the media though. It's like, it's like they can't, and they've, they've done this a bunch of times. And, and I think that has largely contributed to a lot of riots because people don't understand. They think, oh, it's because of, I mean, whatever scapegoat there is. They think right. it's because of this when, no, you just didn't really inform the people of what the options were here. Right. Yeah. Uh, James, we appreciate you being here. Now's the point in the show. We get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? 
drinking bro of the week too. That's that's uh, who helps you out with all this footage down there. I mean, that's that's pretty substantial. You, you had to have somebody down there doing this with you. Well, I'll I'll, I'll shout out um, I'll, I'll I'll shout out someone that helps me with a, a lot on my channel and everything right now. Uh, his name's Neil Baker. Helps me film a majority of my videos. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, Neil Baker. I would, I would chat on multiple people, but Neil Baker, he's a huge help to my channel, re largely responsible for filming most of my videos, everything like that. So shout out to Neil Baker. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers to Neil. Um, and then obviously everybody can find you on uh, YouTube uh, dot com slash James Klug. That's K-L-U-G. Correct. Uh, yeah. You're one of those. You, you have an umlaut over the, the U, right? That's correct. Yeah, long you. YouTube, uh, YouTube.com slash James Klug. Also, do you guys mind if I plug uh, your your merch really quick? Just because uh, I didn't get it in. You mind if I do that? Yeah, for you? God, God. All right. So uh, I, I'm not wearing it today just yeah. because I didn't get it in just yet. I know we, we tried to do this all super, super last minute, but I will be wearing the defund politicians t shirt. I yeah. wear it in, in black. It's going to be looking money. I gotta, I'm excited to wear honestly, it. So you guys everybody's sure buying those I've shirts. Got, yeah. I've got a couple. It's one of the most popular <laughs> things that's being sold by us right now. But I've been walking around. I have a couple of different ver or, uh, colors in it. And I've just been just not really as an experiment. I just happen to be wearing the shirt. But I did pay attention uh, and walking through the to my dog park next mm -hmm. to my house. And at least once every time I walk out in it, somebody's like, hey, nice shirt, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, never yeah. know why they think that. That's a good thing, right? I, it's a good thing that I don't know if this is some fucking liberal dude that hates what government is doing or some conservative dude that hates what government is doing. You know what sure. I mean? Well, it's one of those shirts that is down the middle of like, yeah. hey, I hate politicians. I really don't care about yeah. anything else. So yep. it's great. And is that your hat that you're wearing? I like that hat. Is that do you have a merch store? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, Jamesclude.com slash shop. I got uh, actually I heard you guys mention something about fake news. I have like fake news merch that just yeah, says yeah. fake news on it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, we, we, we host a show on Thursday. It's called fake news. Yeah. 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 I heard you. OK, cool. That, that's that's awesome. Um, and then, yeah, so uh, I have my merch. You can go there to support the channel. Jamesclude.com slash shop. I'll, I'll, I'll send you guys over some gear as well. I like the hat. Send me the hat, dude. I'll wear the hat on the show. <laughs> Uh, I'm a big fan. Well I'm a big fan of yours. Usually when we see you, you're dirty as shit because you just came back from assignment somewhere. Yeah. Look at you. You're all cleaned up. You're ready to go. You might you might Feel be good. on the on the blaze soon or something like that. Yeah, he's, got a, <laughs> he's got Elijah Schaefer DPing I'm, for him today. <laughs> yeah. When you, yeah, when you yeah. showed up on screen today, I was like, it's a totally different person. Is that is that him or is it we, we get another guest? Like last time, <laughs> I mean, you look like you were fucking homeless, but you were I think you were covering the uh, Chaz event or something. Something like that. After, after, after last time, I think it was at the I think it was at the uh, the uh, federal courthouse in Oregon when oh, they yeah. or uh, uh, Portland, Oregon, where they were just burning it, burning the doors down and yeah, throwing yeah. fireworks at cops and all the crazy stuff. I, yeah. I, I recall that. Yeah, Good proud, time. proud of you, James. You clean up nice. We appreciate your time today, <laughs> as always. And then look, you have a standing invitation. Anytime you're working on something, pop on on by. Uh, we love having you here on Drinking Bros. Follow James Klug. Um, he's, he's one of the only guys out there who, who's trying to, to bring you the actual news that is going on. And, uh, it, it's amazing the, the, the footage you're able to get from some of these events, uh, for James Klug, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. We are the drinking bros. Good night, everyone.